The Mac Mini M4 is probably dollar for dollar the most powerful computer available right now. And Apple finally decided to make the stock version have 16 gigs of RAM, so that's awesome. But Apple seems to be sticking to their guns about giving you minimal amounts of storage and making you pay a premium to have more built-in storage. In this video, I'm going to show you what I'm calling the second easiest and second cheapest way to upgrade the storage in your Mac Mini M4. And then I'll explain the cheapest and easiest version. And then I'll tell you why I chose the way that I'm doing it today. And I'm going to show you using the Mac Mini M4, but of course this would work also with the MacBook or MacBook Pro and basically any modern Mac computer. So let's get started. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be adding storage to this Mac Mini M4, and I'm kind of jokingly calling it the second easiest and second cheapest way, and I'll explain that here in a second. But basically, this thing by itself is an amazing deal. It's got all the power you could need for most users, but you just kind of want a little bit more storage. Now, eventually, they may come up with some kind of fancy adapter like you've seen on other computers where we can crack this thing open and take out the storage module and use an off-the-shelf storage module to, you know, adapt into the proprietary version of storage that they have in here. But that's not what we're doing today. Those products just aren't available yet. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding external storage. And because the ports on this thing are so fast, I don't think most people would notice the difference in speed between the internal drive and what we're going to be adding externally. Now in this video, I'm going to be using this enclosure here, which is a USB-C enclosure that uses a M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD, particularly in the 2230 size. Now you could just as easily save a couple bucks if you want to go with the 2280 size and get something like this. It's a little bit bigger. These are easy to find. These enclosures are right around 20 bucks, depending on the size and shape and brand that you buy. And then of course, we're gonna to need to add a drive to that. So in this video, I'm gonna be using a one terabyte 2230 SSD. In this case, I'm using an Inland brown brand and that's basically just because I had this sitting around. But you can basically take just about any brand, any size that you want. You can get these smaller, you can get them bigger. And just for ballpark pricing, this one terabyte SSD here is in the 60 to $70 range right now. As you go into better brands, maybe like the Sabrent brand, you may be paying closer to $99 for one terabyte. But all in, I'm gonna say that what I'm doing today costs right around 80 to $90. And if we switch over to the Mac right now, you'll see that if we bought this thing from Apple with the one terabyte drive in there, it's a $400 upgrade. Now that's not a great deal for a couple reasons. One, obviously the price, and two, you're not really getting an additional one terabyte, you're getting one terabyte. So you're really only getting about 750 extra gigabytes. And then the other thing is, it's internal. It can't ever be changed. If there's a failure, that's it. So having this external solution, I can change the size of this drive. I can swap out this drive. I can use this drive that I'm building today in a different application altogether. If I decide I don't need that expanded storage in my Mac anymore, I can add this to any other computer. And one more reason why I'm doing it this way is because I can take this drive and I can move it from Mac to Mac. If I've recorded some videos and I want it edited on a different computer, I can just unplug this one bring it to the other computer, plug it in, and all those files are ready to go. So obviously pluses and minuses to having it built in versus having it external, but with the big price difference being probably the biggest plus for this, that's the way we're gonna go. So let's go ahead and open this up and see how easy it is to get this open, install the drive, and then we'll plug it into the Mac. All right, so like I said, there's a bunch of different enclosures that you can use, and I chose this one basically for a couple of reasons. One, I know and trust this name, Sabrent, They've been making accessories for computers for years and years, and they're usually on the higher end of quality. This is also made out of like aluminum, which not only does it feel a lot more sturdy than a plastic one, but it may help dissipate some of the heat. It's got a built-in cable, which is nice. I don't have to worry about unplugging the cable to use on something else and then forgetting where I put it. It's good and bad that it's included, but for me, I like the fact that it's built in there and it can't go anywhere. It's already got the USB-C cable, so you don't have to worry about adapting that from USB-A to USB-C. It's ready to plug right into your Mac Mini. It came with a tiny little screwdriver to help with this installation. So let's go ahead and open up the little door here. And it looks like it's got a little locking mechanism built into it, so you won't have to use another screw. 
So I've got the locking mechanism opened up. I'm just going to take my little drive here. And again, I'm using this particular one just because I had it on the shelf here. I was going to use it for something else, but this is a perfect use for it. I'll put some links down below for some other one terabyte and two terabyte drives right now that are probably the best deals at the time of recording. So I'm just going to place this in, lining up the pins. There's a little notch on the inside here that you're going to match with the notch on your drive. And about a 45 degree angle or so, press it in there until you know it's completely secured. We're going to lower this down and then lock it in place with a little locking mechanism. That's nice. Don't have to worry about if we change this out, having to worry about losing the screws or anything. Let's go ahead and pop this door back on here. And the bag did come with a couple extra screws, so that's nice, just in case you do lose one. So let's get this screw back down in here. And that's it. So nice and sturdy. Again, nice build quality. Cute little design. Ready to go. Now I called this the second cheapest and second easiest way. You know, I guess the cheapest and easiest way is just to find one of these that's already built and I'll leave some links down below for a couple of those also. They come in all different sizes and shapes and speeds. And yeah, you just open the box and it's ready to go. And you may save a couple bucks because it's pre-assembled. You don't have to buy two different parts. But I like the fact that I've got a case here that I can use if I decide to change out the size. Or if I need to use this drive with some other device. Or if I need to use this case with some other device. I've got the option of doing that. And that's happened several times as I've reconfigured different computers over the years. Taking parts from one thing and putting them in another. So for me, this made the most sense. But really the result is pretty much the same. This is just the way that I chose to go. So let's go ahead and get this thing plugged into the computer. And see how easy it is to set it up. Alright, now when you're plugging it in, you've got a couple of options. You get the two ports up here, which are both 10 gigabit USB ports. And that's going to be fine for this because this is a 10 gigabit enclosure. And then you also have the Thunderbolt 4 ports in the back that are able to basically be backwards compatible with the same type of USB-C speeds. So I would guess if this was something that you were keeping in full time, you would go ahead and plug it in the back just to keep your desk cleaner. But either way, it's really going to work. So let's go ahead and plug it into the back and then we'll see how Mac recognizes it. All right, so we're greeted with a little warning here that says that this disk isn't usable. So we have the option of either ejecting it, ignoring it, or initializing it. Now we could ignore it and then go into the disk manager and see what it says there. But let's just click on initialize and see if it does that for us. And sure enough, it found the Sabrent Media drive here. And it shows the capacity, so that's good. And it says it's uninitialized over here. So I'm just going to go up to erase. And of course you want to make sure that you didn't have anything on this drive that you needed to keep in the first place. This was brand new out of the box. So I'm not concerned about losing anything. But if this is something that you pulled out of a different device, make sure you back up anything that you might need to keep. So all we got to do now is give it a name. I'm just going to call it 1TB. That way not only do I remember that it's an external drive, but I remember what the size is just by looking at the name of it. I'm going to leave the rest how it was, and hit the erase button. And just like that, it's done. So now we see the drive over here on the left called 1TB, and it's already erased and formatted and ready to go, waiting for one terabyte of data to be copied over onto there. So let me go find a couple big files. I'm going to throw them onto this computer and then I'm going to copy them back and forth just to kind of see what the read and write speeds are. I'm not going to necessarily measure the speeds, but just to kind of get a good feel of how fast it is on kind of everyday copying. So let me grab some files. I'll be right back. All right, so I've got three of my older YouTube videos here that make up about six and a half gigs of video and I've got them just sitting here on my desktop. I'm going to drag these onto the disk and see how fast that they copy over. And here we go. And that was literally just a couple seconds, obviously. So, very quick. I know this isn't a ton of data, but this is, like I said, the kind of everyday use case. If you're not moving a terabyte of data at a time, you know, a couple gigs at a time, that's usually what I test for. 
And then since they're already on the desktop, I'm just going to grab these things now that they're on the drive. I'm just going to copy them over and drag them into, let's say, the Documents folder. And this will see how fast that the files can be read off of the drive and then written onto the internal drive. And surprisingly enough, it actually took longer to do that than it did to copy them from the desktop onto the external drive. That's not what I was expecting, but in any case, so I'm happy enough with the speed that this external disk is getting. So there you have it. By doing this, you can save a lot of money versus just buying this thing up front with the one terabyte in there. It gives you some future proofing. It gives you some options of what size you want to start with and what size you want to eventually upgrade to. And it's nice and tiny. No one will even know it's plugged in there. Now, a couple of my personal tips, I would say install any programs that you can on the internal drive and then use the external drive for just kind of storage, like any kind of files that you're creating or saving, anything that just takes up space that you don't need to take up on the internal drive, I would have that saved out to the external drive. And maybe if you're doing like video editing or photo editing and you're working on a bunch of files, making a bunch of edits to them and actively working on them, I might save those you know, somewhere on the internal drive, do all your edits, and then when you finalize everything, just move it over to the external drive. That way you don't have all the reading and writing while you're editing happening across that USB-C. But even though I called this the second easiest and second cheapest way of doing this, it's still pretty darn cheap and pretty darn easy. But if you do have any questions, feel free to drop those down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer anything I can. I think that's going to wrap up this short and sweet video, just kind of sharing an idea on how to save some money on the storage of your Mac Mini or your MacBook Pro. Go ahead and check out the rest of the channel for other tips and other reviews on these Apple products and basically anything else geeky. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, I appreciate a thumbs up. That helps out the channel. But I thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.